let's look at another organic shorthand, and that is the line notation. And this is the one that we will use the most in organic chemistry. Now, you may have noticed that there's a lot of carbon and hydrogen in organic molecules. And it gets cumbersome to draw them out all the time. Like if I have a molecule like this, and I'm even condensing this down a little bit by not drawing the bonds out to the hydrogens. But it's still taking a while to draw. Now, when we do line notation, we draw a line for bonds, just like here, but we omit drawing the carbon and the hydrogen. And so this now becomes simply that. Now, what does this actually mean and how is this condensed down into the line notation? Well, at each point here, there is a carbon. Everywhere the line changes direction, there's a carbon. And then we know that the carbon needs four bonds. And this particular carbon only has one to it. Well, that must mean that there are three hydrogens because we didn't draw anything else on there. We always draw non-hydrogen atoms and non-carbon atoms. So like the nitrogen gets drawn. We also draw hydrogens that are attached to non-carbon atoms. That's why we drew these two hydrogens, because they're attached to the nitrogen. Normally, we'll leave off lone pairs. You'll see that I didn't draw them in here. Sometimes we will put them on. Maybe they're involved in a reaction. Then we'll definitely draw them. Now, you might say, well, why do we do the line notation? And it, aren't these carbons important? Well, yes, they are. And that's why we're indicating that they're here. Part of the reason for doing this is look at how much cleaner and faster I can draw this structure versus that one. And that can be important. The other thing is it allows us to see the molecule a lot simpler. Like I can see the structure of this a lot easier than I can see the structure of that. And I'm just going to draw up another example here of pyrrole while, while we talk about how this works. So here's pyrrole. And this would simplify down. Oh, I forgot the lone pair there. And I did up here too. This simplifies down into this very easy to draw five membered ring. It's like so. Um, and I'll draw another couple of examples here while I try to talk and do something else. And a lot of times I'm not the best at doing those two things at the same time. Uh, so one of the reasons to, to do this is speed. And it, it ends up being a lot less cluttered. But you might think, well, I'd like to kind of know all of what's on that structure. In case there might be something happening there. Well, most of the time, 
reactions will happen at the not carbon hydrogen part especially here the most reactive portion of the molecule is, is right here with the nitrogen the most reactive portion right here is that nitrogen and some of these double bonds they, they might react here the most reactive part is going to be the carboxylic acid part this is benzoic acid and we can simplify that down to this Like so. And it emphasizes the reactive parts a bit more. And it shows the structure as well. And once you get used to the line notation, you'll be using it all the time. Now, sometimes when we're doing, like, say, an NMR, it's really important to know how many hydrogens are on each carbon. And so you might want to kind of keep track of it or come up with your own little notation for how many hydrogens there are. And, and uh, we'll, we'll talk about that later. But for the most part, you'll be um, using the line notation. So I'm just going to draw up one more example here. Down at the bottom of the page. Takes a little while. So I've drawn up this protonated ether. And you can see how much space this takes up and, and how much time it took to draw. Right? Now let's draw it in the line notation and you'll see um, something important. Now, you'll notice here, I put a chlorine right here. It's not as easy to see that there's a chlorine here because it's mixed in with a lot of other hydrogens and other things. And this is a, an important part of the molecule. That's a reactive group. It's something different than hydrogen. This is also an important part of the molecule because it's protonated. It's got oxygen there. Uh, and sometimes parts of that can get lost here. So let's draw this out. So we have a carbon bound to another carbon, to another one. Now we have this carbon and off of it is another one up here. So I'll just draw that like that. And then O plus charge H and another CH3 over here. And coming back to this carbon, I kind of skipped over it is that chlorine. Now, over here, it's easier to miss it, but we're going to draw that in just like so. And now, this is a lot easier to read because we can see the chlorine more clearly because it's not lost with, around a lot of different hydrogens and carbons and other things. And it's also a little bit easier to see this charge so this is line notation and you should practice this and keep in mind that well there are hydrogens around and there are carbons at each one of these junctures and that's important oh one more example before i let you go um, so when you're drawing like a triple bond or or something like this uh, it's usually a good idea to draw in the carbons a lot of sometimes it is helpful to do that even when you're doing line notation because structurally it, it's going to look like this and sometimes that gets a little confusing right so there are reasons sometimes you'll stick in a carbon or uh, maybe you have a nitrile Uh, a lot of times it is helpful, especially when you have something like this. Or if you have a, a double bond to a, a carbon, to another double bond to a carbon, drawing in some of those carbons 
is helpful because it is a linear molecule and we try to indicate that with our line notation that the this molecule does kind of bend like that these don't they're straight but to indicate that there there's a different atom and and I didn't just want to draw it like like this and then tr draw another couple bonds in there because that that looks weird right and I can't just go two long lines like that because that just looks like I had a, an extended bond and I don't know that there's something in here. Sometimes people put a little dot in there. I think the better option is to just write the carbon in in cases like this. So there are some times when we'll just stick the carbon in. It's useful especially when there are no hydrogens on it and you can see um, where Sometimes that can come into play. It can also come into play where you stick a carbon in just to emphasize that group. And maybe there's going to be a reaction at that site. You can emphasize that. You can kind of play around with what makes the most sense and what kind of helps you out visually. So there are some slight variations sometimes to the line notation, just for readability sake, especially when you have these weirder cases where you've got double bond, double bond, double bond, or, or triple bonds. So that's line notation. Uh, thank you, and we'll see you in the next video.